changes in appearance. Production accelerated quickly. By 1949, Volkswagen was by far the Federal Republic of Germany's major manufacturer. This vast factory, conceived by Adolf Hitler, destroyed by Allied bombs and revived by the British Army, was within four years of the end of the war producing 45% of the country's total industrial output. Export was essential. In spite of major efforts, American interest was slow. An open cabriolet version was developed. Max Hoffman, the New York dealer who pioneered the Porsche sports car market in America, agreed to represent VW. But by 1952, annual sales only numbered in the hundreds. In 1953, Hoffman's franchise was cancelled, and Nordhoff began planning the establishment of Volkswagen America. But in Europe, there was no question about the strength of demand. In the early 50s, production accelerated quickly. The small Spartan Volkswagen Beetle was finding its place in the European car market. Some of Volkswagen's promotion at the time may have slightly overstated the Beetle's carrying capacity. And this advertising film may have given the impression of greater towing power than was really available from the small four-cylinder Volkswagen engine. Mensch, das ist ja Land. Das ist ja ein Norm, ist das ja. Das ist ja noch gar nicht. Mein Volkswagen hat noch ganz andere. Na nu, na hören Sie mal, bei Ihnen riecht aber verdammt an. Even the smell of burning turns out to be not a damaged clutch, but the handbrake carelessly left on by the driver. In the early 50s, Heinz Nordhoff's policy of gradual refinement was carefully put into practice. It was now almost 20 years since the basic design of this car had been established by Ferdinand Porsche. And yet to the market, it was relatively new. Its performance was slow, even for the time. Its engine size had been increased to 1131 cc's, but top speed was still the 100 kilometers an hour demanded by Adolf Hitler, just a shade over 60 miles an hour. The split rear window was replaced by a one-piece oval in 1953, and more colors were available than in Hitler's time, but no other obvious changes would be made to the look of the car until 1958. Although the Volkswagen itself changed little in the 1940s and 50s, it caused changes in post-war German society that few would have believed possible. The first major change in May 1945 was the name of the town that housed the Volkswagen factory workers. KDF-Stadt, town of the strength through joy cars, was no longer considered appropriate and the British nominated town council agreed that it should become Wolfsburg after the nearby 14th century castle. Wolfsburg was to become home to a swelling population of post-war German families, seeking peace and economic security after the turbulent years of the war. Hitler had established his KDF Staat near a variety of forms of transport. In the early 1950s, his decision proved to be right. 
As Volkswagen production expanded, transport capacity was needed to bring the vast quantities of raw materials consumed in the creation of tens of thousands of beetles a month. Hitler had dreamed of rivaling the great American automobile manufacturers, and now Heinz Nordhoff found himself running one of the new industrial giants of Europe. At one point, in 1945, there had been a good chance that the whole Volkswagen complex could have disappeared from Germany. The French were interested in moving the complete facility to France as war reparations booty. Only protests from the French automotive industry prevented it happening. For a brief period at the end of the war, Henry Ford II was interested in buying the plant. But there were legal problems in establishing ownership, and the location of the factory, relatively close to the Soviet sector of Germany, was discouraging. Also, the small Beetle with its air-cooled rear engine was far removed from the kind of car Ford traditionally manufactured, and the American public traditionally bought. Henry Ford walked away from any deal. But the legacy of Ford was still present in the Wolfsburg manufacturing plant. Many of the production tools were of American origin, and its production philosophy was strongly influenced by the elder Henry Ford's ideas. By 1955, the Volkswagen engine had hardly changed from the design established by Porsche's team 20 years earlier. The cylinder bore had been increased, slightly improving power output. But apart from that, it was still the same flat four horizontally opposed layout conceived in Hitler's time. Two pairs of cylinders oppose each other, like fighters in a ring. The format is known by Germans as a boxer motor. In the mid-50s, the Volkswagen plant at Wolfsburg was for its time highly automated. But still, an enormous proportion of the assembly line work was done by human hands. And to keep up with production standards and the speed of the line, those hands had to be highly skilled. Because of the low power output of the small Volkswagen engine, the gearbox and transmission were extremely important in getting power to the road as efficiently as possible. The Beetle four-speed transmission evolved from a simple crash gearbox to an excellent four-speed unit, easy to operate, fast in action, and highly reliable. The gear lever was located on the floor and because of the rear engine, there was no transmission hump to take up room in the car's small interior. The efficient combination of engine and gearbox and its contribution to driving simplicity is one of the key elements of the Volkswagen Beetle's success. There was little handwork involved in making the car's body panels. Giant presses forced flexible, thin steel into rigid, recognizable body shapes. But putting the body parts together 
was a process of intricate human teamwork and cooperation, depending on speed, accuracy, and economy of movement. The familiar beetle shape emerged in minutes, riveted, welded, and screwed together by human hands. And while this team was doing its job, dozens of others were doing exactly the same thing across the vast factory floor. Similar teams of human hands, male and female, fitted headlamps, tail lamps, turn indicators, instruments, and all the interior body trim as the lines moved on. In the mid and late 50s, demand forced the establishment of other plants in Hanover, Brunswick, and Kassel. From a small workforce made up of German prisoners of war in 1946, less than a decade saw the development of a vast group of specialists contributing to an unlikely success story. Part of the explanation of that success lies in the Beatles' rugged simplicity. It had no frills. It was structurally sound and hard to break. It was different from any other car available at the time, apart from the Porsche sports car. But the Beetle was no sports car. It was a simple utilitarian revolution in transport. By the end of 1954, the number of beetles that had emerged from the Wolfsburg factory was approaching the one million mark. It was short of Hitler's ambition to produce one and a half million in the three years to 1943, but for a factory that had been all but destroyed in the war, it was a remarkable achievement. The roads and railways that brought in raw materials carried out finished cars and took many of them far beyond the borders of the Federal Republic of Germany. The cheap, reliable beetle was finding enthusiastic buyers all over the world. Nineteen fifty five was a big year for Volkswagen. Volkswagen of America was established, and U.S. sales, only 600 in 1952, exceeded 30,000 for the year. The American market, slow to catch on, was now beginning the move that would eventually make it Volkswagen's most important outside West Germany. Volkswagen's climb to the top was gathering pace. The company based much of its promotion on the characteristics that had been designed into the car by Adolf Hitler. Hitler had insisted on an air-cooled engine because most German working-class houses did not have garages and an air-cooled engine would be better able to cope with Germany's cold winters. According to this 1955 Volkswagen promotion, it was a great advantage climbing the steep passes of the Alps where its water-cooled competitors would literally fall by the wayside, boiling. The only use a beetle driver would have for water in this situation would be to wash the car or relieve a thirst. Hitler probably didn't envisage a Volkswagen driver being snowed in at a ski lodge. 
but the beetle's cold starting ability made it attractive in the snow. Even if the heater was crude and difficult to adjust, 